actually felt sick as I packed my overnight bag. Was it nerves? Or maybe I really was getting sick. Wouldn't that be a relief? No, at this point, nothing was going to get me out of this. Maybe you've been there yourself. Maybe you've dreaded it just as much. You know what I'm talking about. Time for the church ladies retreat. You know, the ones where you're supposed to bear your soul to 150 of your closest friends. Definitely not my style. But here I was, stuck. It was my husband who insisted that I go. You can't go on like this, Michelle. You're a great mom, a great wife, and you give your all here at home. But you need some downtime, some time to be refreshed, some time with other women like yourself. Hard as he tried, he didn't understand. How could he? There are no other women like me in this bunch, sweet husband. None of these women have been where I've been or lived like I've lived. None of them are carrying the burden I've carried for all of these years. Oh, I've hoped that I could be understood. But when I look around at the fellow moms in church, all I see is perfection. Perfect hair, perfect smiles, and perfect children. Husbands that seem to adore them. I can just bet they've never had to struggle to pass up a temptation. They've never had to lay down the torment of the awful decisions I've made in my life. I don't belong with them, and I never will. I know God loves me, and I don't need to go on a retreat to be told again. But he would not take no for an answer. So I went for him, not for me. My absolute greatest fears were realized when I arrived. Someone had the bright idea of randomly pairing us with a roommate. Not that it really mattered. I wouldn't have been able to pick one I was comfortable with anyway. But her? Lord, really? If anyone could make me feel inadequate, it was her. I knew her from a job we had worked together years before. She was beautiful and intelligent. Worse yet, her husband sent flowers to the office for her at least twice a month. Ugh, what did I expect? Of course someone like her would be married to a romantic. I did my best to smile and be as kind as I could as I suffered through the night with her. Boy, was I relieved to walk out of that hotel room the next morning. I remember thinking, let's get on with this day and get it over with. The morning session went well. Lost in a sea of other women, no one could see my fear. Maybe I could survive this thing after all. Harmless, right? Wrong. At the end of the morning session, we were assigned to small groups to give our testimonies. Testimonies? What could these perfect women of my church have that could compare with the hell I've lived? I chuckled to myself as I had an amusing thought. Maybe I should just blurt mine out and scare them all off. Then, at least I could just get in my car and drive home. Hmm, not a bad idea. Unfortunately, that meant I would be faced with explaining my early return home to my husband. No, I would have to go with the usual plan, the mask. I know you know what I'm talking about because you've worn one. Maybe you're wearing one right now. The mask, the face you put on so everyone believes that your life is just as perfect as theirs. The beautiful and mysterious mask. It was clearly my only choice. It gets better. Wouldn't you know, out of 150 women, Mrs. Perfect married to Mr. Romantic, my roommate was in my small group. Great. She was the last one who would ever understand me. Thinking on my feet, I decided to simply let everyone else go first. With any luck, I would just run out of time and not have to tell my story. After some small talk, we got down to the business of sharing. I can't wait, 
I thought to myself, this should be, well, predictable. Or so I thought, until the masks came down. We started to my left with Susan. I've only ever known Susan as the lady with the children who answer yes, ma'am, to everything she says. Susan was caring for her elderly father in her home. He had severe dementia and usually couldn't remember her name. He could do nothing for himself. He was helpless. Sometimes, as she cared for him, she was reminded that there was a time as a little girl that she too was helpless. Helpless to do anything about it when her father would visit her in the night for things no child should ever have to endure. Then there was Liz. I oftentimes gazed her way at church, seeing her with her second husband. I was impressed that he was so cheerfully participating in the rearing of her two children from her previous marriage. Was she ever blessed to find someone so willing to overcome that difficult situation? He must really adore her. How was I to know that he struggled with an addiction to pornography? And then it was on to Mrs. Perfect Married to Mr. Romantic's turn. Was I surprised when I found out the meaning of those flowers? It turns out, every time he went drinking with his buddies, he abused her when he got home. The flowers were supposed to make everything okay. These were stories of abortion, betrayal, adultery, depression, and so much more. Finally, we came to the lady sitting to my right. Oh, please, Lord, let her testimony be a long one. There's still so much time left. But I didn't have much hope. I didn't know her well, but well enough to know that she had nothing meaningful to share. After all, she was our preacher's daughter. What did she know about life? Raised in church, protected from the world? What could she possibly have experienced? And then... She went on to share the most horrifying story of all. She shared mine. This woman, raised in a comfortable and secure home, always so together, shared her story of addiction. How she got in with the wrong crowd because they seemed fun. How she spiraled out of control. She spoke of the things that she did to support her habit, the shattered dreams, the broken hearts, and her struggle to stay clean. And I couldn't believe it. Mask off. I was looking at myself in the mirror. The fact was, I could see some of myself in every one of these women. Women who have struggled and still struggle. Women who had worn masks or had been victims of my own callous action of slapping a mask over their faces in response to their pain. And in that moment, it became clear. Without the masks, these women shared a very special thing. They were loved, forgiven, and cherished daughters of a sovereign God. And now, masks down, they were sharing their journey of pain, their testimony of victory, and encouraging one another to continue to overcome by surrendering their struggles daily. In this one action of allowing their struggles to be exposed, they were achieving new levels of freedom in Christ. The love of Christ demonstrated to one another by this simple gesture of removing the mask. And then, the strangest thing happened. I caught myself praying that there was still time to remove my own.